morning guys uh, we're getting ready for a typhoon it's coming through uh, east japan this is actually the biggest one we've had this year 2019 um so uh, i'm basically gonna this is kind of my first encounter with a typhoon um talk to timmy so um yeah we're just gonna document this see how we go uh yeah like it's pretty pretty serious uh, i can see most people are going to down to the shopping center going down to the supermarket getting some final preparations ready for this big storm um it's already started raining so i'm a bit worried now as well about um, how soon this thing is going to hit yeah uh, so basically to give you a bit of an idea of how serious this particular typhoon is um, they've cancelled both the rugby games for the Tokyo World Cup Tokyo Rugby World Cup they've cancelled both Saturday games um, tomorrow um, just because of the, the typhoon so that'll give you a bit of an indication of how serious this is going to be um, I don't know if they normally cancel the events during typhoons but this is this is pretty big uh, but yeah so I'll, I'll give you a bit of an update um, later on so I'm just taking a look outside now so Kind of the early stages of the typhoon or the rain coming in. You can see the raindrops not even like coming down, it's like blowing everywhere around. Yeah, it's been going on. It's now what? It's now 8 o'clock, 12 minutes past 8, and yeah, it's been raining like since 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock, so yeah, we'll see how long this keeps up. Uh, they they s said in the uh, report, Typhoon's going to make landfall at about 6 o'clock tonight in Japan, so go and do things while we still can. Um, guys, so I'm back in the car. It is now uh, quarter past 10, 10 15. It's still raining, but it seems that the wind is picking up. It's getting a little stronger. Uh, but we're basically going to head out, grab a couple last minute supplies. Uh, so I need to go get some candles, I need to get some matches or a lighter as well as a hot water flask that my dad kind of just gave me a good idea because if they cut off the electricity I'm not going to be able to get some hot water whereas if I have a flask I can get some hot water so here we go we're gonna get some last minute supplies right done my shopping but check it out like the whole car park is full again so yesterday uh, I came to the shops supermarket last night basically and also the car park was full shelves are going empty not as badly here in Matsumoto and Nagano prefecture but if you go along the coastal cities in uh, East Japan and most of basically most of Japan because uh, the typhoon uh, is basically coming at such a perfect time where the we've got a full moon coming on Monday for this week and so the tides are higher than usual uh, so we're gonna have high tides and with the large amount of coastal wind and high-speed winds created by the typhoon it's gonna cause some flooding in eastern Japan and uh, along those coastal areas so yeah the the shelves if you you can just check it out on the, on the news Google uh, typhoon hug something it starts with a H Haglish or something um, hits Japan and you'll see on the news that they pretty much a lot of the shopping centers the shelves completely empty uh, for people preparing for this typhoon so yeah that's how big it is uh, look a bit scary here. <laughs> all right there's some light okay so it's pretty much raining outside now so it's, it's so dark it's only 5 45 it's 5 45 but it's completely dark all this stuff above me 
It's just rain clouds. It's just from that typhoon. Ah, camera got a bit blurry. A bit of water on it. So yeah, pretty pretty dark now. This heap of cloud cover. Lots of rain. It's just been raining the whole day. The entire day today. So we're gonna head inside and get the rest of the stuff ready. Oh, I'll show you what I I have to do. So I'm in my apartment, and the first thing I gotta do is fill this puppy up, fill this baby up, or oh, oh, both of them. My shower and my bathtub. So this is what we're gonna do. Get this in. All right, because um, during the typhoon, they may decide to cut off all the water supply, so we've got to fill up the entire bathtub with water. So we'll let that run, and then we'll clear as well. Um, that one. Like, ah. okay. Pull that up up as well. So we're going to fill that up. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is I've just got to boil some water. We're going to keep some hot water together. So put my little kettle. Put my kettle on. And. Uh, Okay, hold on. Clear. And yeah, yeah. Right, cool, that should start boiling. Okay, and luckily, in the cupboard, I've kept a bunch of bottles. So, we're gonna fill up all these bottles with water. And I might freeze a couple and then keep a couple in the fridge. So, we're gonna. Fill up all these water bottles. Okay, filling so out the sink, and it looks like the kettle's done. Okay, so we'll pick the bottle. Put it over here. Okay, so I just cleaned my sink, and now we're gonna fill up this basin as well. Alright, and I filled up those water bottles. Uh, I didn't get to fill up all of them because I ran out of lids, didn't have enough lids apparently. And I uh, just want to see. Uh, soap is over there, just watch the sink a little bit so I don't get disgusting water. And looks like the bathtub is just about filled. So we're going to change it to this basin now. Alright, and that should do. Alright, cool. And we're just going to leave it like that. Alright, switch left there, switch off. So that's here. Whoa. I'm gonna wash the spaces, spaces for the next one. Alright, and that's, that should be enough. Alright, cool. Alright. You can hear the rain outside. Just, let me, let's go take a look. Yeah, it's still pouring down. It's gonna get quite a bit more rain fairly soon. Alright, so we're gonna close the door. Alright, so the main reason why you want to fill up your bathtub and your sinks with as much water as possible is because uh, in the event of a typhoon, you may have your water supply and electricity cut off. So, during the time that you have before the storm, you should get as much water available to you as you can in case of an emergency where they may cut off your water supply. So that's why if you look here, um, I have my water bottles now, I'm going to put them in the freezer. That's why over here, I've got one, two, one big water bottle, two big water bottles in the fridge. And now I'm going to about to add a couple more, so we'll have one, two, have another, so we'll put about three in for drinkable water. My fridge is pretty empty because... I don't, didn't really cook that much during the week, so I'm going to eat up. Okay, and then in the freezer, the trick I've learned from the news, okay, put the this side, is you want to freeze some of your water bottles as well. So one, two, three, three and one big, massive ice cream. Ouch. All right, let me get that in. All right, cool. So... Alright, cool. And shut. The reason why you want to freeze your water bottles is because when the electricity gets cut off, obviously your fridge is not going to work. 
And if you've got icy water bottles in the freezer, you can take those icy water bottles out and put them in your fridge over here. So you can keep your contents nice and cool. All right, now to show you what else you need. This is some stuff I bought yesterday. In the event of a typhoon, you need some non-perishable food. That includes snacks like these. More snacks like these. And some more snacks. Oh, this is a, uh, what is this? Uh, tuna, I think. Ranch King. Furu. Furek. Flakes. So basically, um, basically, some fish you can just eat out of the packet. Alright, and you need some dry food as well. It's not gonna perish. More snacks. Um, oh, and some canned veggies. So canned food is always a good idea. Uh, this is corn, so we can have some corn. Uh, yes, you need some canned fruit as well. So they're always a good idea. I got a box of curry as well. Um, I think you can cook this in like hot water or something. Yep, so now that our hot water is um, all ready to go, I'll, put, I'll show you what to do with it. Chips. And your, obviously your cup noodles or your yummy noodles there. So I've got two cans of that and a more canned fruit. Yeah, and in here you need, I bought some gloves because you never know who you might need to help out. So you might need to like go do some rescue work, I don't know. Who knows? Um, you need disposable plates because you won't be able to wash your dishes. So disposable plates is a good idea. Uh, ooh, some more food, some cake. More cake, uh, non-perishable. Um, rubbish bags, uh, I just got rubbish bags because I need rubbish bags. No. And then uh, chopsticks, you need these chopsticks, yes. In the other bag, I have a flask. So I'm going to put the hot water in here so it stays warm. You need tissues, because tissues are always important, especially in the event of a typhoon. You never know if you're gonna catch a cold and you might need some tissues. You need candles. Yeah, candles, matches, matches, and something to hold your candle. And lastly, Something to fix your tires. Yeah, that was just a my own maintenance thing. Another useful thing that you can have is maybe like a little torch or a head torch. So I'll put this on my head so that when there's no electricity, I can see where I'm going around. Woo! It's so handy. I sometimes use this when I'm reading at night time just to save up on electricity bills. So if you're someone who's paying too much for electricity, consider getting yourself a torch. Alrighty, so we've kind of uh, just passed the worst of the storm, so it's now 11.37. I'm still awake, but I'm getting really tired now. Um, I've kind of lived out the excitement of the storm, of the, the typhoon. Uh, at some point, I think the alert was raised to level 5, but luckily my apartment still has electricity, so um, I didn't get a power outage on my side uh, so I maybe it's because I live in an apartment and I've got like a backup electricity but my lights never went out so we weren't affected as badly I do know of a couple of colleagues and friends who were affected by the typhoon and they they're still in the same city same uh, yeah in Matsumoto city but I, I must be one of the lucky ones that wasn't affected in terms of power outage and water uh, cut either. So, yeah, we're pretty lucky. But, yeah, the, the worst of the storm has passed and there has been damage to, in places like Tokyo. I think Shizuoka and Chiba got most of the brunt from the typhoon. Uh, at least one person has died from a car being turned over by the typhoon. And I think one person went missing after two people got taken away by a river. The river flooded and then they got taken away downstream. So I think one person still is missing at the moment and the police are searching for that person. A couple of houses have collapsed along the coastal areas in uh, Japan as well, in the coastal cities. 
or, or cities near the coast. And yeah, but the the rain has died down here in Matsumoto. So we're going to get a very good night's sleep tonight. And tomorrow morning, we might be able to give you a bit of a damage report. Good morning, guys. It's now 7 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to just take a little peek outside. Now that the sun shines out. The rain has completely stopped. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a bit of clouds and stuff here. It's actually pretty cold as well. The wind's... Yeah, the storm's pretty much passed over our city. Uh, it's probably now heading more towards North Japan, towards Sapporo and those areas, but uh, hopefully it's been weakened by then, so oh, I'll flip the camera now. So that's kind of the clouds over there. And then you can see how fast they're traveling. And then on the, the other side over there, you can see there's still a bit of, yeah, it's all like, it's still pretty, pretty grey and dark, so could probably expect a few drizzles uh, later on. Uh, it seems like my bike is okay. It looks like it was moved a little, a little bit, no, no, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. I actually got a flat tyre, it was like... This um, valve is busted, so I have to replace that in order to pump the tire properly. Um, maybe I can make a video about that, how to fix the, how to fix the tire. If you want to know how to fix the tire on your bicycle in Japan, just check out the suggested video at the top. Looks like one bike was blown over. I was fast asleep, but yeah, look, look at that. It actually looks beautiful after the storm. I don't know, I don't know why, but it's almost like after a disaster, <coughs> you can actually see some pretty nice sights. I think the clouds just give it a bit of a contrast in color. So with the early sunshine, you just start to appreciate the view a little bit more. So yeah. Yeah, everyone seems to be okay over here anyway. Now, just because I'm okay doesn't mean that the typhoon wasn't that bad. Um, so to get, I was just up to date with all the reports and stuff. Uh, two people have died in this typhoon across Japan. About 90 people were injured and another 10 people are currently missing. So... Well, missing now the shooting of this video. So it was a pretty dangerous typhoon. It was pretty serious. Um, about 350,000 homes in Tokyo lost power, didn't have power um, due to the storm. I think many people had to evacuate as well along the coastal cities, especially Shizuoka and Chiba. So when a typhoon like this is approaching, Typhoon Hagibis, uh, please make sure that you do prepare for the worst, fill up your bathtub and just basically follow all the stuff that I was doing uh, throughout this video. Uh, take it seriously, don't take a chance with nature, nature can be quite ruthless and so I'm just fortunate and lucky that I live on a mountain there was no landslides as well, um, and that yeah the storm, the wind, strong winds didn't really get to me. But <clears throat> I'm pretty lucky and fortunate that the the typhoon didn't hit us as hard as it did in most other areas. But as a side effect, as you can tell, my voice is a little croaky. My nose is actually a little blocked right now too, as the from the effects of this typhoon, so the weather can and the climate just changes so much. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I have to wear a mask, make sure I don't catch the cold because it's pretty cold now too. So <clears throat> yeah, so I'm just gonna leave you with that update. Hope all your preparations are well. Those who have been affected by the typhoon, um, wish you all the best with your recovery and your relief. 
in some ways I actually wish I could be have been around to help rather than sitting in my home feeling completely lucky and safe uh, and useless so and if you are someone who uh, is kind of part of efforts to help yeah just just help your neighbors help your community help the people who are affected by this typhoon because it was a really big one and um, yeah treat it as a practice run if you are someone who is as lucky as me and didn't get affected as badly still take it seriously and treat it as a practice run for something that may even be more serious in the future so that's another talks with timmy video guys um hopefully you got some insightful advice and i'll catch you guys around next time meters of bound, uh, ground zero, <laughs> but 150 meters, we go straight on the elevator, got the elevator, and then, yep, this is 150 meters, this is so, that guy, <laughs>